The following video is for a disassembly and repair of a Type 9750 PTX rotary steam joint with a stationary siphon. Please follow your company's safety procedures whenever working on Cadent Johnson products. Read all of the instructions before proceeding with the repair. Refer to the Cadent Johnson assembly drawing for part identification. Assembly drawings are available upon request from Cadent Johnson. Lubricate all fasteners with anti-seize compound. Tighten all fasteners in a star pattern. Torque specifications are listed on the product assembly drawing and are available from Cadent Johnson. Note, do not use anti-seize or petroleum-based products on O-rings. Only lubricate the O-rings with the silicone lubricant supplied with the Cadent Johnson repair kit. Prior to handling lubricants, consult MSDS or SDS information. Repair kits are available for the various sizes of PTX rotary joints. Step 1. Confirm that the equipment is locked out and all residual pressure is released from the steam system. Step 2. Disconnect the steam and condensate flex hoses. Step 3. Remove the head by loosening and removing the head bolts, securing it to the body. Separate the head from the body. Step 4. Bend the tabs back on the tab washer that helps secure the hollow bolt. Loosen the hollow bolt approximately one quarter inch. Using a large lead or brass mallet, strike the hollow bolt. This will disengage the support tube from the body. Loosen the hollow bolt as required and continue to push the support tube into the body. Step 5. Loosen and remove the hex nuts securing the body. Remove the body by tapping it with a lead or brass mallet. Slide the body off of the support tube. Step 6. The end cap is under spring tension and will move away from the ring bracket about one half inch during this step. Loosen and remove four 5 16 socket head cap screws that secure the end cap flange to the ring bracket. Remove the end cap assembly and place it with the nipple facing up on a work surface. The face of the nipple is a sealing surface. Please handle with care so it is not damaged. Step 7. During step 6, the seal ring should have fallen out of position and is resting on the support tube. Reach inside the ring bracket and remove the seal ring. End cap assembly. Step 1. The nipple has spring force behind it. Use caution while performing this step. There are shoulder bolts located in the torque tubes. Loosen and remove all but two 6mm hex drive shoulder bolts. Leave two in position that are 180 degrees apart. Mount the end cap assembly in a press. Allow for about 6 inches of travel when the press is released. Place a block of wood across the face of the nipple to protect it. Push the nipple approximately one quarter inch into the end cap using the press. Loosen and remove the remaining shoulder bolts. Release the press, allowing the nipple to slide out of the end cap insert. Note, you may have to tap on the nipple to remove it if there is an excessive amount of debris trapped in the assembly. Step 2. Once the nipple is separated from the end cap insert, remove the springs. Inspection. End cap insert. Inspect the bore of the insert for steam cuts or excess wear. The bore should be smooth. The insert is stainless steel and can be polished using emery cloth or a Scotch-Brite pad. If the insert is worn, replace the insert by removing two bevel head screws from the end flange and push it out through the end flange. Reverse this step to put it back together. Nipple. If any of the three topics discussed in the following are found to be true, the nipple needs to be replaced. Inspect the flat face of the nipple. It should be smooth and not steam cut or pitted. 
If the flat face has a ridge, either at the inner or outer edge of the seal ring contact area, the face has worn beyond use. Inspect the nipple where it fits into the end cap insert for wear. Remove the O-rings and inspect the O-ring grooves. If the O-ring grooves are steam cut or otherwise damaged, the nipple needs to be replaced. Torque tubes and shoulder bolts. Inspect the torque tubes. Replace if worn using Loctite 242 on the threads. Inspect the shoulder bolts. Replace if worn. Reassembly. Step one. Place the end cap flange assembly in the press. Step two. Lubricate two O-rings and install them into the O-ring grooves in the nipple. Step three. Place new springs into the spring wells on the end flange. Step four. Position the O-ringed end of the nipple into the end cap insert while aligning the torque tubes with the springs and shoulder bolt holes. Step five, place the block of wood back onto the nipple face to protect it. Using the press, push the nipple into the insert, compressing the springs. Put a small amount of Loctite 242 on the shoulder bolt threads. Insert the bolts into two torque tubes, 180 degrees apart, and tighten. Release the press, and the nipple should bottom out on the heads of the shoulder bolts. Remove the end cap assembly from the press and install the remaining shoulder bolts. The end cap assembly is ready for installation. Inspection Other Components Body Remove the O-ring from the face of the body and discard. Inspect the O-ring groove for pitting or steam cutting. Inspect the steam flow ports for erosion. Clean the gasket surface. Replace body if any area is damaged. Lubricate and install a new O-ring into the O-ring groove and set the body aside. Wear plate. Inspect the seal ring contact area. It should be smooth, not scored or steam cut. Replace the wear plate if damaged. Loosen and remove the socket head cap screws. Separate the wear plate from the journal flange. Clean the wear plate gasket surface and the mating surface on the journal flange. Install a new wear plate by reversing this procedure. Tighten the wear plate bolts to the proper torque in graduated steps using a star-patterned tightening sequence. Head. Clean and inspect the head's gasket surfaces. Inspect the interior of the head for erosion. If the gasket surfaces are steam cut or if there is erosion present, replace the head. Reassembly. Step one. Pull the support tube away from the ring bracket as far as possible. Clean the sealing surfaces of the end cap assembly and the new seal ring. Place the seal ring over the support tube next to the wear plate, letting it rest on the support tube. Step two, install the end cap assembly by passing it over the support tube while aligning the four 5 16 inch holes in it with the four threaded holes in the ring bracket. There should be about a one half inch gap between the end cap assembly and the ring bracket. Using Never Seize, lubricate and install four 5 16 inch socket head cap screws and secure the end cap assembly to the ring bracket. As the cap screws are tightened, the one half inch gap will disappear. The end cap assembly should be tight against the ring bracket when this step is completed. Step three. On the end of the support tube, there may or not be an O-ring. If an O-ring is present, remove it. Lubricate and install a new one. Lubricate the taper on the support tube with Never Seize compound. Make sure the milled notch on the end of the support tube is at the 12 o'clock position. Step four. Position the body over the support tube, aligning the pins in the body socket with the slots in the support tube. 
continue to slide the body over the support tube until the support tube bottoms out in the body socket. Lubricate the threads on the hollow bolt using a never seize compound. Position the tab washer over the hollow bolt. Thread the hollow bolt into the support tube finger tight. Lift the body and support tube and place them over the studs protruding from the ring bracket. Make sure the body O-ring is still in position. Lubricate the studs using Never Seize. Install hex nuts and tighten, securing the body to the ring bracket. Tighten the hollow bolt to 300 pounds per foot. Then bend two tips on the tab washer next to the flats on the hollow bolt. Step 5. Install a new gasket on the body. Position the head against the body and secure with the head bolts. Tighten the head bolts in graduated steps using a star pattern sequence. Step 6. Check the seal ring alignment and the X dimension. The seal ring should be centered on the nipple. Consult the rotary joint drawing for the correct X dimension. Step 7. Install the inlet and outlet flex hoses using new gaskets. This completes the disassembly and repair of a type PTX rotary steam joint. Please consult Cadent Johnson if you have any questions.